So, the cat. We don't like her. <laughs> hey, hey everyone, hope you're doing really, really well and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, today I'm gonna to talk about the most dreaded exam, the UCAT, previously known as the UK cat when I sat it because I'm a bit old now. <laughs> so I'm trying something a little new. I'm gonna be creating a video series where I'll be making one video for each section of the UK CAT exam, which I'll be posting over the next few days, maybe weeks, where I'll be going through the most useful tips and techniques for each section that I used when I sat the UK exam. And of course, all of these videos will be linked in the description below, so check them out. For this video though, I'm gonna start off by talking about the more general tips and techniques that you should be aware of before you sit the exam. So stay tuned and stay hydrated. If this is the first time you're viewing my video, welcome, my name's Julia, and I'm a third year medical student at a university in London called King's College. So before we get into the fun stuff, let's have a quick recap of the structure and the scoring of the exam. As you'll probably already know, the UK CAT is comprised of, oh my gosh, I need to stop saying that. The UCAT is comprised of five subsections, which each contains one minute of instructions, followed by a number of questions. The scoring for each section ranges from 300 to 900, apart from situational judgment, which is scored in bands, from band one being the highest to band four being the lowest. Each question is worth one mark, regardless of difficulty. Now, in terms of what makes a good score, according to the Medic Portal, the average UCAT score changes from year to year, but will generally be between 620 to 630 points per section. A low UCAT score will generally be below 610, while a high score is normally considered to be above 680. But take all of that with a pinch of salt. Now, for the competitive souls out there who want to get a little bit more technical, according to Kaplan, a score of 700 or above in any section is considered an excellent mark and difficult to achieve, while a score of 800 or above in any section is a superlative mark and very difficult to achieve. And to put that into context a little bit, Getting 80% correct in any section will give you a score of approximately 800. For situational judgment, obviously it's a little bit different, with the average UCAT score generally being a band two, meaning that you wanna be getting either a band one or a band two in your exam. <sighs> Capiche? Capiche. The UCAT is marked on the number of correct answers you give, and there's no negative marking for incorrect answers which is fab. At the end of the test, a total scale score is generated by adding up the individual scores of verbal reasoning, decision-making, quantitative reasoning, and abstract reasoning to give you a total score between 1,200 to 3,600. <sighs> and breathe. <laughs> now, as you may have already learned the hard way, the most difficult aspect of the exam is timing. So each section has a certain number of questions and quite frankly, nowhere near enough time to answer them. So you really, really want to practice, practice, practice as much as you can under timed conditions. You really, really want to get used to the format of this exam and have a real time feel for the speed at which you really need to be going at, which believe me for this exam is going to be fast and furious. Now the official UCAT website has done us a little bit of a favor. On there you can find practice tests, which are a replica of the real exam, which are super helpful. So I'd really recommend practicing on a computer and more specifically getting used to the online calculator tool, which is attached to the exam because computer-based testing can be a bit of a struggle sometimes. Or at least that's what I told myself when I failed my driving theory test the first time. <laughs> There's also some keyboard and mouse shortcuts that you can use that I'm gonna put up here that can save you a bit of time and just make your life a bit easier on exam day. So get to grips with those as well as the online calculator tool. Another super useful resource that I used that I actually think saved my life when it came to UCAT was Medify. Now Medify is an online paid subscription with over 10,000 practice questions and enough practice papers to make you wanna gorge your eyes out but I can almost guarantee that anyone that's done well in their UCAT will have definitely come across Medify because it's actually a savior. And this isn't even sponsored or anything, so you know it's legit. All the questions have various levels of difficulty so you can really challenge yourself. And the online tests are designed to look like the official UCAT exam. So it's, it's nice to get used to the format. But we're in 2020, so you probably wanna try different types of revision resources. And if you're sitting the UCAT soon, then you probably would have heard of this bad boy, which is the 600 UK CAT practice questions includes full mock exam. That's not a great title. <laughs> Maybe it's called Get Into Medical School? I don't know. Either way, this one. <laughs> now, in my opinion, I didn't like it. <laughs> I found the questions to be really, really hard, which for me was massively off-putting. 
especially at the start of my revision. And I could be wrong, but I actually think these questions are harder than the ones that you would find in the real exam. I'd say if you're looking for good, challenging practice questions, then by all means invest in one of these. But for me, I wouldn't recommend starting off on this book because I was really taken back and really demotivated by it. So maybe later, but not right now. I'm just not a fan. <laughs> one book which I loved on the other hand is this one here called UK Cat for Dummies, like me. Um, I mean, it even looks friendlier. Like I'm getting better vibes from this one. <laughs> So again, this one has loads and loads of practice questions which are slightly easier than the blue book. And what I really liked about this one is that it has really clear explanations under your answers which talks through exactly how to get there. As well as before each section, it has a nice little summary of all the tips and tricks and techniques that you should consider before you give it a go. Although this book is slightly easier than the blue one, I would say this is a really nice starting point to sort of ease yourself in and get into the vibes of the UCAT exam. And although it's slightly pricier, it comes with free online cheat sheets attached. And by the way, all of the resources that I mentioned today will be linked in the description below. Cat. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering how much revision is enough revision for this exam. And that's a really tricky question. So I remember I bought those books at the beginning of summer. So I want to say starting from around July, I would dabble a bit here and there. Not anything serious, but basically when I had a few hours spare, a few times in a week, I'd sit down and just do a couple of questions just to sort of like be familiar with the exam. Now, I'm a massive, massive crammer. So for me, the bulk of my revision came from when I went wham, which was about maybe two or three weeks before my exam where I revised every single day for a few hours. And I think those three weeks of going properly wham was enough, but obviously I had that background of like doing bits and bobs here and there. So it wasn't just three weeks exclusively. Obviously I could have done with a bit more practice, but the issue is with the UCAT, it's not something that you can sit and memorize. It's just all about practice. The more free time you have to dedicate to it, the better you'll probably do. But it's really difficult to quantify exactly how much. It's just like an infinite meter of practice I guess. Now if you're a bit nosy like me you'll probably want to know what I scored. Now I sat my UCAT in 2016 which is a while ago I know and it was when decision making was actually being trialed for the very first time and not officially scored. So my total score came from verbal reasoning, quantitative and abstract reasoning. So in those three components I scored a total of 2,190 giving me a 730 average and I scored band one in situational judgment. Now believe it or not that total score was enough to get me into the top 10% nationally somehow but here's where you're in for a shock. So my scores for each of the sections are as follows. <laughs> verbal reasoning 550. What was it that I said again? A low UCAT score will generally be below 610. Be below 610. 610. Quantitative reasoning, 890, and finally abstract reasoning, 750. As I said though, it's the average score that counts, so please don't be disheartened if a score for one of your sections isn't as high as you would have liked it to be. I'm not a reader never finished a book in my life, can't do comprehensions either apparently, and <laughs> I actually remember coming home after getting my results and reading on one of these like student room forums that someone had written that if you get below I think like 580 in any section then you're automatically like disqualified from most unis and I remember reading that and thinking like oh my god like I have well and truly but that's definitely not true and Clearly, someone was misinformed. That was supposed to be smooth. It's a bit cringe. Obviously, you should be aware that some UK unis do actually look at the UK cat heavier than others, so it's something to look into, but getting a low score in one section isn't the be all end all. Now, with regards to specific techniques that I used for the exam, I think the first one I'd recommend is to triage and to prioritize your questions. As I said earlier, every single question is worth one mark. So you really, really want to be acing those easy questions and not wasting too much time on the difficult ones. Often the difficult questions will be put at the start of the exam to get students to waste as much time as they can. So I've got this lovely method to tackle that called guess and go. And as it says on the tin, once you come across a question that you think you're spending too much time on or perhaps you're just not vibing with it, then you just flag the question, 
guess it and remember to give an answer because you've still got a chance of getting it right and go and just move on to the next one. And then if you have time at the end, come back to it. Because the biggest mistake you can do is to get hung up on two or three questions and then miss out on those really valuable marks that would have only taken you a few seconds to work out. Time is marks here, so you really don't have any spare seconds to be wasting on difficult questions that you might not get. My next piece of advice for revision would be to focus on your weaknesses. Now, I am your classic textbook example of someone that didn't do that. And when I look at the difference between my verbal reasoning score to my quantitative reasoning score, the difference is actually a bit embarrassing. <laughs> As you can tell, I prefer maths to English. And so when I was revising verbal reasoning, I tried to avoid that because maths made me feel good and it made me feel confident. And I'm human, so psychology. So when you're practicing for the UCAT, what you wanna do is to find your weakest section and it sounds so obvious, but make sure that you focus on that to see if you're making any common mistakes and try and get rid of any bad habits. Basically, you don't do a Julia. And when you get an answer wrong, make sure you go back and read the explanation properly instead of just shutting your eyes to it like I did. <laughs> just think, right, those extra few hours that you spend on the section that you hate the most could be those few hours that get you into your dream career. So psychology. <laughs> Another really useful tool to consider is having a look at online study forums like the Medic blog for instance which I'll link in the description below or the student room or even random Facebook study groups for the UCAT um, in your year where everyone's in the same boat and it's sort of like a nice little community where you can exchange tips and advice and ask questions and seek help and you can learn from other people until someone tells you that you're not going to get into uni. <laughs> My final piece of advice would be to choose your exam date carefully and to structure your revision around that. So I know that a lot of people choose to get their UCAT exam done out of the way really quickly before school starts. I was the opposite. I wanted it as late as possible because I wanted to have a summer to myself. And I thought that when I actually returned to school in September, that would get me into like a revision study mode, which would help me revise. Whatever works for you is fine, but just try and pick a date as soon as you can and just be wary of the weeks leading up to the exam so that you're mentally aware of what's going on in your life at that point so that you know how much time you'll have to dedicate and when you should start properly preparing. And that brings me to the end of this video. I really hope it was useful. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment below what your best techniques are for revision and any resources that you find helpful. And don't forget to check out my other videos coming soon on how to tackle the individual sections of the exam. As I said, practice, 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 keep track of your progress and subscribe for more content coming soon. Wishing everyone the best of luck if you've got your exam this year and hopefully see you soon. Bye.